Welcome to NFL News and Rumors, March 21st. March 21st, baby. I'm sorry I'm late. I know I typically go at about 10.30 a.m. EST, but I had to be a house boyfriend today, folks. You know, my house was a fucking disaster. I had to do a little bit of laundry, all right? So I had to make sure that the shit stains were out of my underwear. And the entire situation, baby. You know what? Just call me a house husband at the end of the day, folks. Welcome to another edition. Do me a favor. Smash that like button for me. Three dots in the top right corner. A like button will appear. Smash that like button for me. Helps me out tremendously. And subscribe to the channel if you are brand new. Let's make it happen. AJ Prods, what's going on, baby? How you doing, baby? How you doing, man? How's the good life? Every day starts with a good NFL news and rumors vid. What's up, Broski? LJ. What up, bro? What up, man? What's happening, Dan? Any good news? I'll tell you what. Listen, man, I'm going in this raw right now. I was just in the middle of some laundry. I ran some errands around town this morning. So we're going to find it out together. Figure out what's going on across the league. I know March Madness is just absolutely pumping right now. So that's going to be relatively interesting. So maybe it's pretty low key, like in the NFL world. Hold up. Hold up, man. Have to make a slight adjustment real fast to this stream, boys. Beautiful. Beautiful, dude. Go Bills, Dan. Luke, what's up, man? How you doing? Keith Stewart, good afternoon, my good man. Hope all is well. Good to see you. Did you dust the house, Paul? I certainly did. I certainly did. My list of chores this morning, I did the dishes... So I got the skid marks out of my underwear. I dusted the house. I did the entire thing, man. Call me a house boyfriend. It's an absolutely beautiful thing. Chris716, what's up, man? How you doing? My nine-year-old tells me to hold up. Don't tell me how to live my life. F your feelings is coming in, being very hostile, all right? It's noon this morning. Welcome. Have Paul Costa right there. Thumbs up, man. He's, He's appreciating the chore life, you know? I mean, I can't live in a dump, you know what I mean? I was looking around and I was saying, hey, I really can't concentrate with my house looking like an absolute wreck. All right, listen, everybody in here, I got my boy Keith coming in skid marks. Sometimes the asshole itches a little bit and you do a little itch. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes there's some reminiscence at the end of the day, all right? Not all of them, just occasionally. Maybe yesterday when I saw that Julian Blackman wasn't the safety that we ended up signing and it was Mike Edwards. I'm growing to it. I'm growing to it, folks. I'm okay with it. I might have, you know, I might have sharded a little bit when I was upset. And Dan has skin marks because he knows OBJ is a dolphin. Luke, you're, abs- <laughs> you're absolutely right, my friend. OBJ is a dolphin. Super Bowl confirmed. Got to clean up. Respect your place, Toby. 1,010%. My mind is just not where it needs to be. Folks, if you're coming in, do me a favor. Smash that like button if you're on YouTube. Three dots, top right corner. A like button will appear. Subscribe to the channel as well. If you are new here, I hate dust, dude. Who doesn't? Why is Dan wearing a suit jacket trying to act professional? I actually traded this off uh, with so the homeless guy down the street earlier this morning. I traded him three Adderall, and he gave me this. It's nice. It's a little itchy. Um, I think I'm developing a rash on my left arm, but I liked it. I thought he had styes, so. I got to be professional, man. Listen, I have gone through years and years and years of me being the Buffalo Bills content creator bad boy, all right? And I figured, I was just like, you know, I have to rebrand myself as a professional content creator of the NFL. No fucking cussing, and I have to up my wardrobe. And that's essentially what I needed to do. Red Pill TMB, professional is overrated. I agree with you, my friend, but listen, I'm in math class. Damn! Bass Gang YT, damn, dude, what you covering today, bro? And some of that long division, some of that addition, some of that subtract. And Daniel is a professional. I, Dude, look, suit jacket. I mean, yesterday I was fucking shirtless with a beach shirt on and a chicken wing necklace. So I'm just giving you my vast palette of style, okay, folks? I just don't know ball. I also know style, all right? I also know style. Daniel is a professional. Paul Cost is coming in saying OBJ isn't going to matter against the Buffalo Bills. Superman Allen is different still. 
algebraic formulas. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. Math was never my strong suit. And and I'm assuming Bass Gang YT must be a math whiz at this point because why would he be watching Dan Mitchell while doing algebraic formulas if not? Maybe I'm just as white noise at the end of the day. The Panthers have agreed to terms with safety. Jalen Hawkins on a one-year deal, sources say. Former fourth-round pick of the Falcons is headed to Carolina after a pit stop at the Chargers last season. Okay, yawn. Absolute yawn. Julian Blackman visiting the 49ers. I just got to waterboard myself right now. I just, just got to waterboard myself right now. Julian Blackman is visiting the San Francisco 49ers today, folks. The safety that many of you know, I wanted to be a Buffalo Bill for the longest time, is now officially visiting the San Francisco 49ers. I'm sure that they'll get him for a bag of Doritos and uh, so a few coupons to a San Francisco strip club. That's basically how it's going to play out because they're just going to get him for a wonderful deal. They'll probably have a, a better contract when it comes into it. Dan, are you planning to go to any games this year? And will you let us know? Would love to buy you a beer. Roger, I'll tell you what, my friend. Yes. Roundtable Sports is actually planning on doing an event at each and every single stadium. And Highmark Stadium is one of them. I will let you know once the schedule is released, but I will be going to a solo game. I'm thinking about going to Bills 49ers. <sighs> um, and we're also going to be looking at a couple of other things. Looks like you just stopped podcasting from your OnlyFans page. Listen, bro, I ended up getting, you know, it's professional. And so, I, and so I ended up getting professional, Glenn. And so I talked about it in therapy. I was just like, hey, you know what? My therapist, and there's this guy, Glenn, and that's on my streams every day, and he just bullies me to all hell. And my therapist suggested that I need to step up my game, baby. So I threw a suit jacket on today. We're going to make that happen. Hit that like button. Absolutely, folks. Three dots in the top right corner. Make that happen. Okay, what's this going on? Um, So the NFL beat writer Mock Draft 2.0, Caleb, Jaden, Drake, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Romo Dunze, Joe Alt, JJ McCarthy, Dallas Turner, and Brock Powers. There was an update earlier this morning when I was perusing, and I did see that the Arizona Cardinals are apparently shopping the number four overall pick. So... What teams are interested? That is the question. We're going to have to figure that out. Hit that like button. What's up, Dan? Damar Hamlin guarding OBJ is going to be a movie. Nick R, bro. Let me t- d- dude, I can't say your name like that. That sounds way too close. Let me tell you something, Nick. All right, bro. Damn, dude, dude, dude. And so you know what you're doing. And so you know what you're doing. And so you're trying to get me canceled, bro. And so you're trying to get me canceled right now. But listen, all right, listen. Damar Hamlin defeated death, fool. Damar Hamlin defeated death. OBJ is going to be nothing. OBJ is going to be nothing, bro. Damar beat death, fool. So we ain't worried about that. Get out of here. Ian, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Dolphins fans are dreaming. <laughs> I got to change that. Yeah, you do, bro. Dude, dude, it sounds way, dude, it sounds way too close, bro. Yo, Dan Juan, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? How you doing, man? How's life? Dan Orvlosky says Jaden Daniels uh, would be his number one pick in the draft with Caleb Williams through a 70-yard bomb with very little effort in a draft exhibition. Listen, as much as I want to hate, as much as I want to hate on Caleb Williams, like due to his attitude, his father, it's hard for me. It's very difficult for me to lie to you and say that I don't think he's the best prospect coming out of the draft. And at that point, with everything that they're putting together out on the field right now, for whoever quarterback comes in, it's got to be Caleb Williams, bro. You have Keenan Allen, you have DJ Moore, you have DeAndre Swift, who's a pass catching back. That's going to help him out pretty good. They've made investments in the interior of their offensive line. I think Caleb's your only option, or otherwise I think Everfluss is – a certified moron if he doesn't go that way. Um, I'll be honest with you, man. I think both Drake May and Mr. Jaden are just not going to do well in the NFL. It sucks. It's not the most ideal situation, but I just think that both Jaden and Drake May are going to be busts, to be honest with you. And I think Caleb Williams is going to be the best. 
That's how it was. That's basically, it's basically how it was. But listen, all right. As you guys know, there's a couple of new rules. Update your NFL account. I don't want to update my NFL account, bro. Damn it. Hold on. I'm just trying to read something, man. Let me see. I'm good there. All right, let's just do this. Soon you'll need a password. Okay, never mind. I can just do this. Okay. All right, folks. Big news right here as far as around the league. There might be a couple of rule changes that will be put into place and see how it plays out. Not uh, no, nah, but on real, I think the division is going to be real close this season. I mean, with the Jets making moves, the Dolphins, you know, still, I'd say having the same team offensively, at least, and the Bills still having the same team offensively. I think this division is probably going to be pretty close myself. So you are certainly not alone when it comes into it. Hamlin probably won't make the team and OBJ has one leg. He will swindle Dolphins like everyone does. All right, I got to go back to class of starting. Bass Gang YT, I appreciate it, man. Good luck in those algebraic formulas, my friend. Enjoy them. So what will it take to go over there and to the number four spot to take that wide receiver? Angel from Puerto Rico. Go Bills. Angel, what's up, man? Hope all is well. It's going to take a hell of a lot, man. It's going to take a hell of a lot. Uh, they probably need a first-round pick next year. They probably need a third and fourth this year, and they might even need a player from our team. They probably need Stephon Diggs next year's first, swap this year's first, and a third and a fourth for us to even sniff the top ten. Four would probably even cost more. And to be completely honest with you, in my opinion, I think we're better off with Stephon Diggs still getting a receiver in the later ones. But then that is it. OK, folks, in a week, all owners are about to be voting on some rule changes that the NFL might see. Now, for example, we've talked about this on stream quite a bit. And the biggest thing that they are planning on voting for is, is that they are going to be changing up the NFL kickoff or they're voting on it at least. This is what we could be expecting, right? So the ball will be kicked off at the five right here. And the receiving team is going to line up just five yards away from the kicking team. Minus, of course, the kicker, and then also some two deep guys. As soon as when the ball is kicked off, or as soon as when the ball is kicked off right over in this area, excuse me, that is when the kicking team is allowed to move. So the second that it gets into this zone, they will be able to move by itself. They're saying that it's going to essentially make a kickoff occur. It's going to make a kickoff occur 75 to 80% compared to the 25, I think they ended up rating that right by itself. Essentially think of the XFL style kickoff might be coming to the league. As far as any additional rules in which that you can see, so... With this scenario, right under the committee's proposal would have the following rules. So the kickoffs that hit the landing zone must be returned. Okay. So say that it's caught or say that it's within the landing zone. Like this returner has no choice. Absolutely has to return the football. And the kickoffs that hit the landing zone and then go into the end zone must be returned or downed by the receiving team. If downed, the receiving team would get the ball at the 20-yard line. And the kickoffs that go into the end zone and stay inbounds that are down would give the receiving team the ball at their own 35-yard line. And the kickoffs that go out of the back of the end zone in the air or bounces would also be a touchback at the receiving team's 35. Starting an offensive drive at the 35, my friends, literally go on ahead and just complete like two passes, like two passes for like nine yards in air, maybe a couple of yards after the catch, and you're in field goal range. So not particularly happy about this one. I like some of these other rules that are in place beforehand. So say, for example, it doesn't go into the end zone at all. It needs to be returned. And then with the kickoffs in the landing zone that go into the end zone must be returned, et cetera, et cetera. So the kickoff short of the landing zone. Oh, what? Okay. So, so the kickoff short of the landing zone would be treated like a kickoff out of bounds. And the receiving team would get the ball at its own 40 yard line okay chat sound off and let me know what you think about this that is stupid <laughs> i agree with you i agree with you glenn i do believe that it is stupid but they are voting on this this week 
And to be honest with you, I'm not even entirely sure if it needs to be unanimous, say that it needs to be unanimous or if this is just a, um, and so a majority of owners that would need, so to put this in. And this is such a better kickoff than the present NFL kickoff. It's funny how the NFL copies everything the XFL has ever done. Zero creativity because it's afraid it's old, crusty fans backlash. Ronnie Ann is saying, hey, Dan, how you doing? Is Caleb Williams the new Bo Callahan? I don't think so, man. I think that Caleb Williams is about to be a dog. What about the onside kick? Hear me out on this one. This is also a rule that came up. This one is actually interesting. I like this one. A lot of people don't like this one, but I do. All right. An onside kick, this is now the replacement in case it comes into it. And granted, folks, this is being voted on. This is proposed by Philadelphia, and they're saying they will allow a team to maintain possession of the ball after a score by substituting one offensive play, fourth and 20, from the kicking team's 20-yard line for an onside kick attempt. So say that a team wants the onside kick. They can elect to convert a fourth and 20 on the opposing team's 20-yard line. It doesn't account for any points whatsoever, but if they can convert that fourth and 20 into the opposing team's end zone, then they receive possession again. That is also a rule that they're planning on voting on at the end of the day. In my opinion, I don't hate this one either because a fourth and 20 right into the end zone might be slightly more possible than an onside kick. But I think this would make the game a bit more interesting. And you get one more offensive play. You still see your offense out there. So what happens if there's a holding on the de- <laughs> on the defensive line? My thought, and they didn't go into, so they didn't go into detail on this, but my thought is, is that say that there's a holding on the defensive line or say that there's, an, like, say that there's, a, Say that there's any penalty whatsoever from the defense. I'm assuming that what they would do is that that team automatically gets possession again, that they would win that that onside kick. And say that there was a penalty on the offensive side of the ball, I'm assuming that they essentially would have failed to convert the onside kick. So I think where their mindset is, zero onside kick, fourth and 20 on the kicking team's 20-yard line, And if they convert that fourth and 20, then they receive possession again. If there's a penalty on either side, depending on who made it, also determines whether or not that they receive possession again. I think that's interesting. I think that's interesting because I rarely see any onside kick get converted. And I think a fourth and 20 is pretty difficult to convert as well. Bill signing former Colts... March Fools, that doesn't exist, bro. That does not exist. He got up here and he got me all excited for absolutely nothing. He's visiting San Francisco. So unless he agreed to a deal while he was on the plane over to California, unlikely. Spin. I think they, and so I think, I think that they would just treat the penalties like they would if a team is on the 20 enforce the flags and replay the down. Um, so I believe in the XFL and there is a penalty. It's just like a regular play and it's way more likely to be converted than an onside kick. <laughs> I was going to say, so that's a rule. Uh, let me see. Okay. Uh, one rule as well by Detroit. It's going to protect the club's ability to challenge a third ruling following one successful challenge. So essentially somebody gets a third challenge play if they hit one of the two by Philadelphia that you eliminate and the first touch spot after receiving team possesses the ball by Philadelphia to permit a team. Okay. We already read that one by Indy. We can permit a coach or replay official inside of two minutes to challenge any penalty that has been called. So a coach is allowed, okay, a coach or a replay official inside of the two minutes can challenge any foul that has been called inside of two minutes. So Indy is asking that they can actually 
review a penalty that is called in the final two minutes of the first and second half. Um, I like that one too. And to be completely honest with you, I am a huge fan of that one because how many times has a penalty absolutely like a bullshit call has fucked over your favorite team? I feel like, okay, chat sound off and let me know what you think about that one. I think this one's my favorite. And to be completely honest with you, meaning that a coach can challenge a penalty call or a replay official can challenge a penalty call inside of two minutes on the half. Talk to me. <laughs> you can't because otherwise that last two minutes would last forever. Um, I suppose you're right. My thought is that it just needs to be like egregious or it just needs to be like a PI or it needs to be... I don't know. <laughs> like, I feel like a holding or anything like that. I don't know. Let me see. So, so you can score, just keep scoring every time. Imagine converting three touchdowns in a row on three straight plays. That fumble in the Steelers game, remember that. Yeah, shit like that. Okay. By the competition committee, they are proposing to allow for an enforcement of a, a major foul by the offense prior to a change of possession in a situation where there are fouls by both teams. Okay. Basically meaning, so we allow enforcement of a major foul by the offense prior to a change of possession in a situation where there are fouls by both teams. So sounds like they're trying to get rid of offsetting penalties right before change of possession. If one of it is egregious. Okay. Then by the competition committee, so to include a ruling of a passer down by contact or out of bounds before throwing a pass as a reviewable play. To include ruling a passer down by contact or out of bounds before throwing a pass as a reviewable play. Interesting. Good morning, Eddie Spaghetti. What up, dude? Man, it's almost like the XFL also had this challenging penalty call too. I mean, sounds like it, dude. Sounds like it. Listen, dude, 97 of you in, like on YouTube right now, do me a favor. Three dots in the top right corner of your cell phone. Smash those for me. A like button will appear. Helps me out with that algorithm. So I'm trying to get um, so I'm trying to get intimate with that YouTube algorithm, baby. So go ahead and smash that for me. So to include ruling a passer down, we saw that. And to allow a replay review when there is a clear and obvious visual evidence that the game clock expired before any snap. Okay. So they're trying to review it based off of play clock as well. I'm sure a lot of us watch games and a certain offense gets a playoff, but we saw the play clock at zero for what seemed like an eternity. I'm okay with that. I think the fumble in the end zone being a touchback should be changed. I don't think they touched on that. Uh, they want to eliminate the hip drop tackle. So the hip drop tackle will no longer be effective, essentially meaning that Derrick Henry will never be tackled again. So, yeah, I mean, that would basically make Derrick Henry invincible at the end of the day. Oh, wait, you don't score points on it and you just get the ball back. Yeah, yeah, you just get the ball back. You don't get... Yeah, yeah, you don't get points off of it. It's basically just the onside kick, and then that's it. Smash the living fuck out of that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Keith, absolutely, my friend. Guys, three dots, top right corner. Smash that. Let's get it up. And subscribe to the channel because I put out NFL content each and every single day. And look at this. It's class time, baby. I'm teaching you about the potential new rules that might be implemented in our favorite league, hence why I have this suit jacket on right now. Professor Dan, baby, we're coming on in. The NFLPA is against the hip drop tackle rule as well. And the more changes they make, the worse the refs will be because the NFL is the standard. Uh, right to be honest, this hip drop tackle has injured players. It certainly has, like Mark Andrews. It, it certainly has. <sighs> okay. What else? Uh, this is by the competition committee as well to expand the crackback prohibition to players who go in motion and move beyond the center to block a defender at or below the knee. So to expand the crackback prohibition to players who go in motion and move beyond the center to block a defender, to expand the crackback 
prohibition. Okay. So they don't want like these skinny ass receivers and running backs going for the knee to add some extra help with blocking. Because if that's the case, like these running backs will be completely inefficient when it comes into blocking from now on. Is that the tush push? Is it? Let me see. To expand the crack back. No, 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 it's not. It's basically like, say for example, like you just like assign your running back for blocking purposes. Like you can't go for the knees or if like you motion a wide receiver and then you're just using him for blocking purposes. And like, he's going for a linebacker's knees or something. Say that he's picking up a blitz. But what has injured more players and the hip drop tackle or the jet stadium? I'd probably say the jet stadium also sounds like Cincinnati is also installing the exact same sort of turf that's in MetLife. So now there's going to be two stadiums that have that exact turf, which is interesting. And they should all just wear bubble suits at this point. Might as well. My friend duckling. Hey Dan, I'm back. How do you feel about the Mike Edwards signing, man? You know what? I've said it a couple of times and I don't want to beat this analogy down, but I feel like I wanted the PS five and I got a, uh, and so I got a game cast. And so I got a dream cast, you know what I mean? It's, it's nice. And so it'll do, and so it'll help out, but is what it is. And the rules basically always favor the defense now. Excuse me. The offense is what Anto is coming in. Okay. Last rule. Last rule change. Okay. So to make a new form of a free kick play that is designated to resemble a typical scrimmage play, by aligning players on both teams closer together, restricting movement to reduce. Okay, this is the kickoff rule right here. This is the kickoff rule. Their goal is to promote more returns and the permits the replay official automatically review whether a free kick legally. Okay, chat. Out of every single rule that I just read to you, so we can think of the kickoff rule. Uh, we can think of the banning the hip drop tackle. We can think of the fourth and 20 substitution of an onside kick, or we can talk about the ability to review a penalty in the final two minutes of the game. Out of all of those four, which one would you like to see implemented? And which one would you hate to see implemented? I'll go ahead and I'll say it. My number one is being able to review a penalty inside the last two minutes uh, rate of a game. It's probably not going to be good for my blood pressure because those last two minutes are probably going to be about an hour and a half, but that's okay. Number two is the fourth and 20 onside kick. I like that. I hate the kickoff rule. I hate the kickoff rule. Not a big fan of that one. And then um, I'm sort of immaterial on the whole hip drop tackle thing, but I just think that that's going to make it very difficult, especially if you get like some a really big receiver or like a Derrick Henry or like a Nick Chubb. For, and for example, none, they all suck. Glenn says, not at all, man. Don't you ruin my damn football. I get it, baby. I get it, man. Listen, I do. Listen, I get it. I absolutely get it. So those are the rules, man. I'm a big fourth and 20 guy, to be honest with you. I think that would be pretty cool. So the Pats signed Jalen Hawkins. We already saw that. A pack scheduled today on NFL Network. Bills versus Titans, 1999. And so who remembers that game? And so who knows what game that is? I'll tell you what it is. I'll tell you what it is. To show you exactly what it was. It was this one. <laughs> he said, Hey, Glenn, football's been ruined for a long time. Oh, man. That was some bullshit. Listen, man, this was like the first like actual cognitive heartbreak I had for the Buffalo Bills. I was, it was 99. So I was eight years old. This was the first. Yes, Mitchell, I know. I know. But I just wanted to relate to anybody that might think of like the most heartbreaking game they've ever witnessed from their favorite team. I don't know, man. Listen, I have a laundry list of heartbreaking games that I have witnessed in my life. I don't count the Super Bowls because 
I mean, I was a toddler and an infant during that time frame. So I really didn't feel the pain, but this was the one right here that absolutely destroyed me. It's a, in the future, I'll be dead, but you'll be watching flag football. Holy shit, man. It's really unfortunate. And the more they fuck with the rules, the more it's going to end up like the other sports that have been screwed up like hockey and even NASCAR. It's crazy to me how many people are in favor of keeping the touchback kickoff in place. 13 seconds. Kevin, that was the most painful thing for me, I think. I think that was hands down. Definitely the most painful game I think I've ever witnessed in my entire life was 13 seconds. This was just my first heartbreak. This was my first one. Uh, what's the highest you've ever felt as a Bills fan? Damn, dude. Um, highest I ever felt was that 2020 run where we ended up making it to the AFC Championship. Because we went out and we kicked the Pats' ass. Then we ended up beating the Baltimore Ravens with that pick six from Taron Johnson. Took it to the house, won the game, and going to and going right to the AFC Championship, man. I thought that game was going to be better. It wasn't. 13 seconds was pretty solid, too. No, 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 excuse me. I have it backwards. Uh, we beat the Colts in a thriller. Then it was the Ravens. And then we lost to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship. That was probably the most excited I was for a long, long ass time when it comes into it, man. That was probably the longest, I think, that I have ever been. Folks, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Three dots at the top right corner. Takes less than a second. Helps out the channel tremendously. What else we got? Big thanks to Greg Rosenthal for coming on the pod. A high butt factor might be the NFL draft prospect's most prized asset. Just ask butt fumble king himself, Mark Sanchez. Definitely shouldn't be overlooked. I feel like this has to be an NFT, is the butt fumble, because I would love to own it. We got Jalen Hawkins. Let me see what else we got in here. Um, so the Panthers signed free agent cornerback CJ Henderson is visiting today with the Texans. He's visiting. He's not signed right there. Screwed that one up. And the Pats are signing former Falcons and Charger safety Jalen Hawkins, not the Panthers. I'd be previously posted. And the Eagles signed former CB Tyler Hall to a one-year deal. The perfect first round for every team with multiple first round draft picks. Let's read this. Let's read this. And with Kansas City got extremely lucky, like catching lightning in a bottle lucky. And the highest is when you drafted Allen, and then you realized the lowest was because you drafted Allen. Oh, Glenn, come on, man. Come on. Hey, Dan, what's new in the NFL today? Lay the cards down for me. Well, Matt, my friend, we just ended up going through a laundry list of potential rule changes for the 2024 season. There might be a change to the kickoff rule. There might be a change to the onside kick where a team would – Basically attempt to convert a fourth and 20 rather than an onside kick for possession. No points whatsoever. It would just be fourth and 20. Uh, then I guess they're trying to ban the hip drop tackle. And then also they're trying to allow us to review penalties called within the final two minutes of each half. That's the biggest news we've seen. And then that and just a bunch of people we haven't heard of signing with respective teams across the league. That is all we're seeing now. Now we're reading an article. The perfect first round for every team with multiple first round draft picks. Let me see. Talk to me. The Bears, okay. Caleb and Romo Dunze would be absolutely incredible for the Chicago Bears. Arizona will go with Marvin Harrison Jr., although this was breaking news, and the Arizona Cardinals are planning or shopping around that fourth overall pick to trade down. So we'll see what teams are interested in trading up for a Marvin Harrison Jr., or maybe the Pats shock us all and the Patriots end up getting Marvin Harrison and they roll with J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix in the second. Wouldn't that be funny? I feel like that would be like a Bill Belichick sort of move, to be honest with you. Wide right, I was 10 years old. Hank, damn it, bro. Listen, man. It's always about to ask, which wide right, man? <laughs> which wide right, bro? Cause, yeah. I mean, now we have a Rolodex of those damn things. Why don't you like the Mike Edwards move? It's not that I don't like, it's not like that I don't like the move, right? He has the most defensive touchdowns since 2021. So that's cool. Um, 
but I just really wanted the youth in Julian Blackman. Like I was so high on him last year when he was in the Colts. Ball hawk, four picks. I thought he'd fit very well. I'm fine with Mike Edwards, man. I'm fine with Mike Edwards. Vikings go with J.J. McCarthy at pick number 11, and then C.B. Terry on Arnold out of Alabama. Look at that. That's what PFF is suggesting, folks. Let's scroll down. Okay, this is great, but I strenuously object in right to the altercation. So pissed about that. And there is no rules proposal for the NFL competition committee on the tush push league has repeatedly said it will monitor the play, especially for injury data, but there is no strong push, if you will, to change anything right now. So the tush push is here to stay folks. The tush push is here to stay for the NFL competition committee. Although that I feel like it's going to die because now that Jason Kelsey has retired, I really don't know many teams that have that sort of quarterback that sort of offensive line that can really pull it off. I will say, and the Buffalo Bills are pretty damn good at it as well. I will say that. Chloe is saying we're still getting Blackman trust, and then we have the best safety duo. I do like Taylor Rapp, though. And do you think we will trade Diggs and what for? Duckling is coming in. Uh, no, I do not think we're trading Diggs this year. Next year is an entirely different story, though. Next year is an entirely different story. I think he's on this team one more year. And then next year, I think we cut him. Or next year, I think... Um, or next year, I believe we will attempt to trade him based off of how he is. But listen, I am very optimistic that Diggs is going to have a good year next year. I still think he's going to be, and so I still think he's going to be the number one target followed by Kincaid. I think both of them are going to be super close as far as receptions, as far as targets and everything like that. But yes, I do see Diggs still being on this team. Uh, what do you think about the Titans? Tighten up, baby. Toby, welcome, baby. Welcome, baby. Listen, love what the Titans have been doing. And I'm interested to see what D-Hop and Calvin Ridley as a one and two for Will Levis is about to look like. If I'm a Titans fan, Toby, Say that I'm a Titans fan. What I'm praying for, what I'm crossing my fingers for is, is that all the moves, vast majority of the moves that I make or that the Titans make in the draft, hands down offensive line. Depth out your offensive line. That was your biggest weakness. If you really want Will Levis to be able to utilize those two weapons in D-Hop and Calvin Ridley, who I do think will be serviceable, you need to protect the guy. Give him some damn time. Knock it out. Sucks losing out on Henry, but I feel like you guys are just going to have to like have a new identity on offense. And that's what it appears that you're trying to do since Derrick Henry is gone. Because Pollard is no Derrick Henry. He's a different kind of running back. So, I don't know, man. We'll definitely see. Buffalo all the way this time. Chloe, absolutely. What do you think about the new kickoff return proposition? I'll tell you what, man. I hate it. I hate it. I get where they're coming from because they want more returns. Because it's going to make about 75 to 80% of all kickoffs an actual return. And it's not going to be a kickoff. Because say that it's a touchback and the kicker boots it behind the end zone, that team gets it at the 35-yard line. They get it at the 35-yard line. So we're going to be seeing a lot of kickoffs. I'm not particularly a fan of it, but it is what it is. What you need to double-check on is that now they're proposing getting rid of the onside kick and they're replacing it with a fourth and 20 try. So, so no points, but would determine whether or not if they won possession at the end of the day. So that's going to be it. I'm getting ready for a job interview via Zoom with that coat. Hey, man, listen, I'm just trying to be professional. Brent, what's going on, baby? How you doing, man? Hope all is well. Hope all is well, man. I'm sitting here. I'm trying to take the role of y'all's professor right here going through with that and then this right here is just pissing me off every single time i see it on my timeline free agent safety julian blackman is visiting the 49ers today i'll tell you what at least he's not going to be in the afc that is good what's up dan should we trade down to around 35 37 pick up an early third somewhere around 70 then trade up the 60th and futures to 40 and draft newbin franklin and sweat <laughs> dude my boy tyler h has been in the lab has been in the lab with some mock drafts as of late. And I appreciate every single piece of it, my friend. 
I appreciate every single piece of that. I'm curious to see what we do, man. I do see us trading up to get back into the third. Don't know if we trade down at 28. Just because we have 11 picks already. So I'm not sure if we're going to like draft and like use all of those picks when only realistically, you know, five or six of those guys will make the active 53. That's how I'm looking at it. I think us bringing in more than 11 players is wildly like unrealistic. I think seven to eight players will be on the Buffalo Bills by the time the draft is over with. So trading down, maybe, and maybe we and maybe we uh, we use that capital sort of trade up several times in the later rounds by itself. But I just have a feeling that we're going to stay put at 28. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I saw that. No more surprise onside kicks. Kind of sucks if it goes through. I mean, I'll be honest with you, Ambance. And I'm sorry if I butcher that pronunciation. I almost prefer the fourth and 20 try. Like almost, you know, like it's it's still very unlikely. It's slightly more likely than an onside kick. Uh, but I don't know. And so do you think the Chargers have a chance to make the playoffs flashy? <laughs> baby, we got a Chargers fan up in here, baby. We are cooking. We are cooking today. Folks, make sure you subscribe. I put out NFL content each and every single day. I'm curious to see what Harbaugh does, man. I really think that this year is going to be the start of a rebuild for you. I just want to know what y'all are going to do at the fifth overall pick, right? Is this going to be a Malik Neighbors? I'm thinking it might be Malik Neighbors um, because, my friends, uh, now you don't have Mike Williams and you don't have Keenan Allen. No uh, Austin Eckler either. So I feel like that is really going to be a youthed out team as far as weapons and for example, because I'm pretty sure Everett's gone too. In fact, I'm pretty sure Everett got traded or he signed with somebody else. So like y'all are starting from the ground up, right? And as much as I like Herbert and as much as I think that he is the truth, right? Um, I'd say this year, unfortunately, I'd probably have to have you missing. I'd probably have you missing this year, but I think as long as you smack like right on your draft picks, I feel like things should be pretty good. We have Peter Wilson saying trade down in the first to pick up a third and then package the late rounders to sandwich our six and seven guys in rounds two through five trade down in the first to pick up a third and then package the late rounders to sandwich our six and sevens to guys in the rounds in the two and five. Listen, man, I know a lot of y'all have been in the damn lab for some mock drafts and I love it. And I'll tell you what, man, I would love nothing more than that. By the way, folks, do me a favor because this is interesting, right? I'm not sure if any of you guys have joined my Discord, but I would love for you guys to join my Discord because I have recently just made a channel within the Discord. And I mean, as y'all can see, I mean, like we have like regular NFL talk, we have Bills discussion, we have shit takes, so bad takes, safe. I have no idea why someone's like advertising their ass over here. Free 18 plus content. I really need a moderator, like more moderators in my discord. Free ass pictures, folks, but it's 18 plus only. All right. Bad takes was in there. We have the fantasy football league in which that I run each and every single year. And then also we have sports betting. So anybody that wants to get, dude, stop putting your fucking ass content. Stop, dude. Stop putting your ass content in my Discord, baby. All right. But yeah, we have sports betting as well. So if anybody is a sports gambling degenerate, then you can certainly check that out. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to put my Discord link in the YouTube video right now. And y'all should a thousand percent join because I will tell you, I'm planning on doing a lot with my Discord moving forward. Right. So, biggest thing is, is that since it is draft season, once you're in this Discord right here, do me a favor, guys. Feel free to go into mock drafts and drop and drop all of these crazy ass drafts you're telling me about right in uh, this, right in this mock draft chat, that or whatever. And I mean, feel free to go on ahead and send me over some NFL talk. We can sit down and make it happen. Um, definitely a beautiful beautiful thing bills discussion the exact same thing we are cooking we're getting it back together baby we're getting it back together who else says nice my channel's discord also never took off so no pressure dude please man 
Don't don't sleep on the comeback, baby. Listen, man, it's my fault. I haven't really made it happen, but go on ahead and join the Discord and start talking, baby. Start talking. Just don't just don't post any ass content. That is the only thing that I that I ask. So say for example, you have a good mock draft for your team. Feel free to go on ahead and drop those in. Full takes. Say for example, you see a shitty ass take or anything like that. Put it in the bad take situation. And then also fantasy football stuff. We have NFL trash talk. What's with the fucking ass content, bro? What's with the ass content? Yeah, stuff like that with trash talk too. Feel free to go on ahead and put some trash talk in there. Bill's discussion. Same thing with NFL discussion. We have TD Finn's talk receipts. So say, for example, you ever see TD Finn's talk on some bullshit and he's contradicting himself, please put it in here because I use it quite a bit. And uh, yeah, dude, so definitely go ahead and check out that Discord. Go on ahead and join it. It's pinned at the top of the chat right now. And since I have this up here, let me go ahead and refresh this page real fast. There are only 51 like buttons smashed. Only 51 like buttons smashed. Let's go ahead and get this up to 75. All right, folks, three dots, top right corner, smash those three dots. A like button will appear and hit that for me and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I really appreciate y'all vibe with me on this Thursday. It's a me, Mario. Mario, what's up, man? What's up, bro? How's life? Um, Richard, I'm asking, and so do you think Bean is willing to go all in and trade up for a high pick? Huh. Um, I don't think that that's... No, I don't. I think best case scenario, like best, best case scenario... I really think that Brandon Bean say that he does trade up. It's going to be more in like the low twenties, maybe the late teens. It's that, uh, dude, we got Mario up in here. Chicken Joe, dude. <laughs> what up, bro? How's a good life? Dan, if an Odunze or Harrison Jr. Falls to around the 15th overall pick, should the bills pounce and trade the 28th and next year's first to move? on up if odun's or harrison jr falls to around the 15th overall first off i don't think there is like any stretch of the imagination where harrison would fall to the 15th probably a pretty difficult thing to suggest for odun's as well uh but yes most definitely if that was the case a thousand and ten percent coach mikey dicka is coming in oh my god what a beautiful thing what an absolutely beautiful what's this Uh, what the New York Jets just did is what every team dreams of ability. All the defense that they have in place, done the investments in the offensive line. Now they have Mike Williams. Watch out if they get Brock Bowers, if they can stay healthy. It's a thousand percent the Jets are the Bills for the division. You know the funny thing about... Damn, baby. Damn, son. I'll tell you what. I missed y'all. Let me see. Setter number one. Gotcha. Okay, Sam H is coming in saying, Diggs will be a steal in fantasy drafts. 1,400, 100 catches, 10 touchdowns easy. The way that everybody is talking about Diggs, dude, I wouldn't be surprised if Stephon Diggs falls like the second or the third round in fantasy. He's going to be one of the biggest pickups that you could even imagine. Afternoon, Dad. As usual, I just finished work at the office for BMW UK. Red Star, dude. What up, dude? Hope all is well, man. Um, what do you think is the biggest need for the Bills draft-wise? Red Star, I'll tell you what, man. I boiled it down to three positions. One is wide receiver. I do want a wide receiver, too. Um, I do want a defensive tackle because we only have three defensive tackles that are currently under contract. And then I think safety help would be ideal as well. Um, never can go wrong with offensive line help as well. For example, a left guard right now, all we have is David Edwards. He is the only person that is on the roster that plays left guard right now since McGovern is being moved over to center. So that's a sleepy pick as well maybe even a center. So, but I'm still putting it into order of priority. Give me a receiver, then give me defensive tackle, safety, and then offensive line help. That's me. I just posted some dude, my boy, what you got? What you got? What you got? What's dude? And so was that you that put free ass content on there, bro? Let me see. Bill's discussion. What's, dude, is that your pool? Hey, Chris, is that your pool? And so I know that's not Buffalo. And so I know that's not Buffalo right now. You must live in Florida. That's beautiful. 
Damn. I know for a fact that that's the case, man. That's that's some funny shit. That is some funny damn shit, boys. We have to build this Discord up, baby. Let's keep let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. All right. Anyway, let me see what else we got. All right. Anyway, onward. C.J. Henderson is visiting the Texans. We already saw that. Jalen Hawkins. What else did we miss? Anything interesting? Hold on. Let's go down. With Kayla Williams, not my full expectation that the Bears take me number one overall pick. He knows a thousand percent he's going there. Former Cardinals executive Terry McDonough, who had the pending arbitration against the team, is accused of assault. Damn. Assaulting a neighbor? I mean, what the neighbors say, though. Jordan, what up? What up? What up? Uh, Williamsville mentioned. It's Williamsville. Dude, it's beautiful, man. Sick ass pool, dude. Holy shit. He had, dude, he had everything in there. Hold on. Let me go back in there. Okay, we have F the Dolphins massive fall off this year. I'm calling it on Discord. Okay, folks. Folks, we're having the, the NFL trash talk is going in here. Fuck the Dolphins. Massive fall off this year. I'm calling it. I love this shit. I love this shit. Bill's discussion. This is fucking sick, dude. Damn. Look at that, baby. Also, we saw that Dexter Lawrence just ended up restructuring. With Joey's coming in and saying, all we do is screens for digs, though, and get like three yards. I mean, listen, I'll tell you what, hopefully that we can expand our game a little bit. And that's exactly why I'm so high on A.D. Mitchell. It's why I'm so high on Xavier Leggett. I'm warming up to Troy Franklin. I like Troy Franklin. I didn't like Troy Franklin. I'm starting to grow on Troy Franklin based off of his pro day. I'm fine with rolling the dice. I know all y'all hate Keon Coleman. I love Keon Coleman. So that's going to be the situation. The W Dolphins slander. <laughs> that's not his fault, man. Holy shit. It's all we do is screens for digs and also get like three yards, dude. I agree. It's the world we live in now, boys. It's the world we live in. Hmm. Look at Lad McConkey, dude. He runs a fucking heater. It's not exactly a pure simulation, but I am an NFL evaluator. Maybe there are some more things that come in. Happy Thursday from NYC. Uh, what we learned from Alabama, Ohio State, and USC Pro Days. Look at that. Actually, yeah, I'm kind of curious about all this. And so in the meantime, folks, I need to use the restroom real fast. I'll be right back. Smash that like button while I'm gone. Let's talk a little bit. And so I want to see screens with Curtis Samuel. We have Dolphins go 9-8. and eight. And so that pool's got me in awe. Now I want one. Yeah, and so, the, and so the picture was from last summer. And so I return to work next week from winter break. Got it, man. And so I don't know how to feel about our defense for next season. Listen, man, if anything is going to give you – some sort of optimism. It's going to be the fact that we have a coaching staff that develops very good players. We get the most 
out of any player we plug and play in that team. And a perfect example, uh, Micah Hyde and Poyer really weren't who they were until they came to the Buffalo Bills. Like, and so their play really elevated once playing with Sean McDermott. So I think that will be in a good situation. And so I prefer to Lake Erie. <laughs> and so I hope Bills get running back Will Shipley from Clemson. Is there a reason we don't use Cook in the screen game? And since we have Samuel now, do you see Brady moving away from Diggs in the screen game? I certainly hope so. Hopefully he's going to be the screen guy, which would be ideal. Okay, with the Caleb Williams show, we saw that. What else do we end up seeing? Dude, he wrote a damn book. Harrison opted out again. We saw that Marvin Harrison just said, screw it. Let me see what else we got. Four, Kool-Aid bounces back. One of the more disappointing developments of the combine. Bama cornerback Kool-Aid McKinstry, a possible first-round selection, discovering he's had a Jones fracture in his right foot during a medical evaluation at the time. This raised the question of whether he might slip from the first 32 overall. Just a few weeks later, though, McKinstry not only showed up to the Bama Pro Day, but he ran a 40-yard dash that was clocked as low as 4.47. According to NFL Network insider Tom Pelissero, so McKinstry is scheduled to undergo surgery on the foot this Friday, and he's expected to be fully ready for the start of training camp. So McKinstry bounced back, baby. Dallas popular in Tuscaloosa. Looks like the Dallas Cowboys, man, looking at quite a few people. And number one is Dallas Turner going into it. Adrian, what up, dude? What up, man? How's life? Yes, sir. In Hamburg, worked for Cooley's Pools, but never did any work like that. That pool was beautiful, brother. Damn, dude. Absolutely, man. We have a love, of, dude. We have a love -a thon going on right here. And the NFL trash talk. Um, and so I think the Dolphins are trying to be the oldest, most injury prone team, and the Jets aren't far behind. <laughs> Prop. I mean, not terrible. And to be honest with you, anyway, okay. So we had a mock draft actually get submitted on the Discord yesterday. And let me see what we got here. Okay, let me see what we got. Come on. Okay, so we had Brian Thomas Jr. First overall, we traded up the 20th overall pick. And got our guy. I think everybody knows how high I am on Brian Thomas Jr. And then apparently we traded up again. And we got Javon Bullard. I fucking like this one, to be honest with you, because Solomon out of Troy, by the way, Solomon had the most sacks in all of college football this past year. If y'all have no idea who Javon Solomon is, I'm talking, dude, he's he's a fucking dog. Draft buzz. Let me see what we got here. He's an absolute dog. Javon Solomon went to Troy. He is an absolute dog, like when it comes into it, right? Pass rush is at 88. Absolute stud. Solomon has the quickness and flexibility to consistently dip and bend around the edge. He's explosive off the line of scrimmage, showing the quickness that sets blockers back in their heels. Hand work is excellent. He's tough against the run, playing with a firm base. So he might be a damn steal for us as well. He might be a damn steal for us as well. Uh, you just made my day drafting Bullard. Listen, man, I know my boy over here, Blessed, loves Javon Bullard. He's been trying to get me on top of that. And I'll tell you what, whoever submitted that right to the Discord had us trading up two rounds in a row. Then afterwards, we ended up going with a defensive tackle out of Alabama. I'm not particularly familiar. I am familiar with Tommy Eichenberg out of Ohio State. Can't really hate with that linebacker depth and then also linebacker depth at the 200th overall pick. So the Bills would just be walking away with six overall. Um, I do like it. I do like it. I love the edge work. And so I love defensive tackle, love linebacker, love linebacker there as well. I'll tell you what I would do. I'd probably sprinkle in some sort of offensive line depth. Because like I said, we only have David Edwards as a guard right now. That is the exclusive of what we have on this line. So love this draft. Folks, if you ever want me to react to anything that you find on the internet or your mock draft specifically, go on ahead and go to my Discord and then feel free to go crazy because I'm trying to get this shit reactivated and make it happen. Get this to be an absolute doghouse for the offseason.
So definitely go ahead and join. It's pinned to the top of the chat. And anything you find about the NFL, literate, like memes I'm fine with, trash talk I'm fine with. I'll probably even be hosting some events as well. So go on ahead and make that happen. Join that Discord pinned at the top of the chat. Is it pinned at the top of the chat? It is. Join that Discord, baby. Make it happen. Make it work. Anyway, well, let's get back to business. Um, that's sweet, man. When my above ground. Okay, thinking about leaving the Discord now, not enough ass content. Listen, bro, we could put some ass content on there, all right? Except for I'm pretty sure it's like 99.9% .9 dudes like like in the Discord. So like if like you want, you know, some ass pics from, from yours truly, I think I'm going to put a paywall on that channel for sure. Uh, that's all I needed to see. Cube. Oh, okay, this was an absolute. What a fucking did. I feel like that was almost effortless too. He, dude, he fucking threw a piss missile during his pro day yesterday. It was fun to watch. What is this? We're presenting the 2024 and NFL flag player of the year meets Staten Island Giants. Sign them up. Sign them up, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, anyway. Best Bills team was the Scabs. <laughs> And just think, Edwards ended the Dolphins season last year. He is the one who intercepted two in the wild card game, so he's all right by me. But yeah, we could have did better, but it's not the end of the world. This defense is safety friendly, so he'll be fine. That's probably all some scams. Uh, it definitely is, Coach Mike. That was a missile. As much as I've wanted, I've wanted Caleb to be a bust. It's going to be pretty hard for me to see him be a bust. At the end of the day, that's just how it is. The Bills own the AFC is coming in. Go Bills. Absolutely, bro. Guys, if you're just coming in, do me a favor. Smash that like button for me. There's currently three dots at the top right corner of your phone screen. All right. And let me tell you what. Only 66 have been smashed, y'all. 91 of you in YouTube right now. How many of y'all on X? Let me see. We got 74 on X right now. Go on ahead. Do me a favor. Smash that like button. Three dots. Let's get this up to 80. Let's pump those numbers up, baby. Rookie numbers over here. Let's get these up. I'm sick of losing to the Chiefs in the playoffs. You and me both, Joey. Absolutely destroys me at the end of the day. Just because he can bomb a ball doesn't mean he's going to be good. <laughs> oh, man. Fair take. Fair take, dude. Fair take. I just got a gut feeling. And the most improved teams after the first wave of free agency made additions at some of the most important positions in the NFL. I'm obviously kidding about being terminated, okay? What's going on here? It's only okay. Let's see what SI had to say to them. 404 error? Okay. There you go. Some good journalism. Let's see what else we got here. Oh yeah. Sean McDermott's birthday. And so Dan's always asking us to pad his stats. Absolutely, baby. Pad my stats, baby. Pad them for me. Just call me Dak Prescott. Just call me Dak Prescott, baby. Pad my stats for me, baby. Or Tua. Call me Tua, baby. Pad my stats. Oh, my God. Let's get it up. Let's get it up. It's the garbage time champion. It's, and so do you think we should get a new GM? I don't know about that. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I definitely wouldn't go that far. Snowman meme with a dream. Ice Network's official meme coin. Oh, okay, dude. We have some crypto guys in here. Can't hate that. Can't hate that, baby. Let me see what else we got here. 87. Yeah, bro, I'm a big, yeah, I'm a big Brandon Bean guy for sure. And so if anything's wrong with anybody, it's not the GM of this team by any stretch of the imagination. Let me see what else. Uh... <laughs> I 
And this draft makes me nervous. It definitely does. It definitely does. And so it gets me going this way. All right, boys. I'll tell you what. I'm going to be working on an NFL seven-round mock draft for the Buffalo Bills. It's going to be a pre-recorded video. So I'm going to go on ahead and get myself a bite to eat real fast. I'll come back. Normally, y'all know I stream for about two to three hours, but the issue is, is that there's fucking nothing going on. What's that? That's why. Okay. Yeah, most definitely. I'm going to go on ahead and I'm going to be working on a seventh round mock draft pre-recorded video. So go on ahead and make sure that you check that out. And then I'm going to give myself a bite to eat. Nothing going on in the league today. Uh, yeah, we'll see y'all soon. Peace.